Hey, Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about why the sample mean, or just the regular mean, is this formula. Why, why do we pick this thing as the formula for the mean? So we know we're measuring central tendencies, and we can do things like if I have a set of numbers like 2, 2, 2, 5, 5, and I wanted to know, you know, I'm looking for a measure of the center, a measure of what we would call an average, so to speak. Well, we could do it, we could find the center a couple ways. One way is, well, the center will probably be closer to the values that occur more often. So we could find the mode. So two occurs the most, so that would be our mode. But we have this one way of doing it that just seems awful strange. I mean, we, we accept it on faith. It's an old, simple formula. Most of us just go, yeah, of, of course this is how it is. But have, have you ever really wondered, like, why is there another way of looking at this? Because we also know that we could get a, an average number. We can get an average or a mean, which is basically to say we're looking for a number that typifies the middle, that typifies the most common number we get. And this number has so much importance in, in math that I really just began to really question this formula here. And right, supposedly, if we just add the numbers, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 5, and we divide by the number of numbers, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers, we divide by 5, we'll get a number that magically fulfills this requirement. And on one degree, it makes sense, right? Because these numbers that are smaller are going to, because there's more of them, they're going to have a bigger sway because... While these numbers are different, so like 2, 2, 2, that's different than the two fives. While those ones are different, they each get exactly one representation in the denominator. These, this one gets one representation, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. These are all equal. And so there's this sense of we're going to take this unequal stuff. So this top stuff here, this is this is unequal. Like two is not five. They're, they're different numbers. Now the twos here are equal, but you get the idea. We, ha we have this inequality going on up here and we want to divide it into some equality, which is notice we're going down here and this is the same number of pieces. And so this is the same way a line kind of works. I mean, think about it. If we have, if we have a line, like this, I can split it into pieces. I know this is so straightforward, but it's, it's really pretty crazy <laughs> when you think about this. We have two pieces we could split it into, and we would say these pieces are equal, but I could split the line into unequal pieces as well, but this wouldn't really tell us anything useful about the line. So division, division produces line segments that are always of equal length. So this is basically saying take a line segment that is this long, all these added together, and divide it into five pieces. So let's go ahead, let's do that. And let's start off by, instead of looking at these things as numbers, whoops, I didn't want to get rid of the end there. Instead of looking at these things as numbers, let's look at these things as line segments. So here we've got a length of two, so here's one, two, another length of two, a length of two, Let's actually, to make this a little bit nicer, I'm going to make this a 1, just so that we have a nicer mean. The math is a bit easier. So we have a length of 1. Then we have a length of 5, which is one of these whole bigger blocks. And then we have a length of 5. So notice we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lines. So OK, we have 5 lines. We have 5 pieces. We have 5 pieces. And we want to find the average piece, the average length of the piece, meaning a piece that typifies the middle, that is most like the middle. So we, according to this train of thought, we know lines, lines, this is the lines being split up into unequal pieces. This is like our numerator up here. And so we say, why don't we just stick all these things together as one big line segment? So here's like the first line segment. It was a two. And then we had another line segment, that was a 2. Then we had a third line segment, that was a 1. Then we had a fourth line segment, because up here, right, I'm just doing these, 2, 2, 1. Then we had a 5, which is this. 
And then we had another five, which was this. So all together, we wind up with a big line segment that is this long. Here's how big it is. And if we add all these up, we wind up with 15. So this line segment is 15 long. That would be the numerator of our fraction. If I were to update our fraction over here, we'd have a one there and we would get 15 on top. And this represents when we put all these unequal pieces together, what we get. Now we want to in introduce some equality to it. We want the, we want these numbers to have in some sense be equal. Well, we say, well, there were, there were, for each one of these segments, there was one line, right? So here was our first line. Here's our second line, our third line, our fourth line, and our fifth line. So in this sense, they're each worth one. They are all equal in this sense. So we say, well, we will take this segment. So from here to here, right, the beginning to the end, from 0 to 15, and we will split it into five pieces since there were five lines. And because of this, those that are the pieces that are bigger will be forced to give to pieces that are smaller if they are outnumbered. But if, if the pieces that are bigger are bigger, these ones are going to be forced to grow. That might seem a little strange. You might have to think about that just for a little bit. But let's just look at this and go, okay, well, we split into five pieces. Well, to split a line into five pieces, we just take that number and we simply divide it. That's the, that's the math for splitting something into an equal number of pieces. And we get out. We get out, not five. <laughs> I have accidentally done this a little backwards here. We have 15 divided by five, and that's equal to three. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, okay, so we go one, two, three. Here's our first line segment, line segment one, one, two, three, line segment two, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So we have one, two, whoops, three, four, five line segments. And these five line segments, we now have what we would call an average. When we talk about an average, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about like, hey, let's take all these numbers and find the line segment whose length, which in this case is three, typifies the most common line segment. We do this by taking these unequal pieces, putting them together to form a line, and then dividing out by the number of line pieces, these guys, how many line pieces did we have? Or in this case, the number of numbers. We had five numbers. If you look at our data set, 22155. Five. Unequal pieces on the top, number of line pieces or number of numbers on the bottom. And by splitting them up and giving each one an equal weight, so this was like worth one, 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 one. That's why we got five down here. By doing that, we wind up with this thing we call the average. So when we look at an average, this is kind of what we're looking at. And so if someone had like a, a shooting average of, uh, that say they shot for 10 free throws and they made seven, well, that just means the most common value of free throws made is seven. And it satisfies this. So if we were to construct a, a line segment some line segment, the average length the, that we could split their shots into would be seven. So this line segment's not nearly big enough for something like this. Uh, let's say that their average was actually more like two. They are a really bad shot. They miss most of their shots. And so we would be able to construct a line segment of two in the entire line would be made of these segments of two. Two, 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 two. These would all be two. But we know that it was an average, and the original distribution may have been something a bit crazier. It could have been like, oh, there was three here, and then there was one here, and then there was, I don't know, three here, and then maybe he's, he's just on this 3-1 roll. You threw shot one and then you shot like two. And we know that the original distribution was actually something like these colors. It was unequal before. It was not, not like this. And when we added them up, we got a result that ended up being two. So this is this one is like, if you're into the understanding or getting an intuition behind these things, 
when you get an average, this is kind of what we're doing. We, we just say, we'll take all our data, we'll add it up, and then we give it, we split it into equal pieces, and this has the effect of, if we have a lot of big, let's look at this, if we have a lot of small pieces versus a lot of big pieces. So if I had a bunch of line segments of length one, let's say here's a length one, whoops, let's draw right here. Here's a length one, here's a length one, here's a length one, like just a bunch of length ones. And then we had one that was like length four, one, two, three, four. Well, the ones are going to dominate the average line size, right? Because this would be like, we'd have one plus one plus one plus one plus four. So that would be four plus four, that's eight, over the number of numbers. And we had one, two, three, four, five, five numbers. This number is going to be much closer to one than it will be to four. So we see that the when there's more small numbers, because of this process, since we gave in the bottom here this five, they all got one plus one plus one plus one plus one. We gave them each the same amount of weight, so to speak, in the bottom. They, they end up becoming a lot closer, and the average would be actually something closer to one. This, may, this also means that things like um, if I had a... Let's just say, for example, this was 100. This number is going to stretch out our mean and make it look like something it may not really be like. And this is where we have to be concerned with our data. So if I was like buying a house, that's the most common one. And let's say that we're in this world where houses are normally $1. And we're, we're shopping around. We got these $1 houses. And there's this $100 house that we see. Well, if you were going to buy a house this wouldn't really be a great thing for like the real estate agent to show you because most of the houses are actually only one buck. They're not really a hundred dollars. So we might want something other than a mean to describe this because the step size, the average value, the line length that it would produce would not be a re an accurate reflection of like the buyer's market. Now, if we were to do the opposite and have a bunch of really big numbers. Like let's just pretend that each one of these is now worth 50. So let's say here's 50, here's 50, here's 50, here's 50. So this is 50, 50, 50, 50. And then we had one little spec here that was worth like one. Well, when we split this up, the 50s will dominate, but the one will drag down again. So outliers are no, no good for us. But if we add it, let's just say, for example, that this line segment was instead something like 13 or maybe let's go with like 22. So it's still really low, but the 50s, the line segment length would be closer to 50 than it would be to 22. Notice, however, that the 50, the line segment length will never pass 50 because how on earth would we have a step size if our biggest step size, like look up here at this guy up here. If our biggest step size is five, there's no way the average could be larger than that. It would be impossible. Like the, the average is constrained to the, the biggest numbers has to shrink to our smallest number. Likewise, we can never have a length smaller than one because there's no, there's no numbers smaller than it. There's nothing that says, oh, it'd have to shrink. It would, it would make no sense, and so it would actually have to grow a little bit. And so this averaging, this property that it has ends up being really important later on for when we do things like z-scores or we talk about measures of standard deviation or variation. But if you want to just chalk it up to an easy, simple process of add all the numbers on top and divide by the number of numbers, you can do that. Just know that there's, there's, it makes sense. There's some things behind it that, that are really, really reasonable trains of thought. So you don't have to just accept this thing on faith. You can say, oh, when I grab an average, I know what I'm actually grabbing and what this number could possibly mean and possible issues with using this number as a measurement. Anyways, if you have any questions about this, let me know. If you have some gnarly way of thinking about the average, go ahead and drop it in the comments and have a blessed day. Okay.